Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I wanted to have a brief look at how is Ubuntu working on the whole removing X situation. And there's some interesting things that uh, I'm observing. Once again, like the one issue I have been complaining about for a long, long time still is a bloody stinking mess. And that is screen recording. Now, I do have it working right now. The only one I found that works well and consistently is one that also wants to default to upload everything to some cloud account. Terrifying. Well, we're using that anyway, because it is the only screen recorder I have found. And this brings up one of those issues. Now, first and foremost, uh, let me get this out of the way. First, we are on the daily developer preview for the next Ubuntu. Uh, so this is the questioning, uh, whatever that bird is that starts with a Q thing. Uh, but uh, this is the one we are on, and there you go. Questioning Quokia. This is the development branch. Of course, they're not even alpha, not even beta yet. Just be aware of that. So the, the problem is, though, is that every error I'm finding has been consistent with Ubuntu on Wayland for a long time and consistent with every other system on Wayland I've used for a long time. So you can see here we are on GNOME version 49. Actually, it was interesting because I thought I saw a GNOME shell of 48. Do a GNOME shell version. That says 48. I'm not sure if there's a discrepancy there, but it does tell me here GNOME version 49. So if you remember, GNOME, they were trying to remove all of the Xcode entirely. So they're going to be removing it. Uh, they're basically going to do a uh, just a, a soft removal in GNOME 49 of everything dealing with the X. Outside of, of course, you can still run the uh, X Wayland to run applications that still are dependent on X for basic screen overlays and things like that will still work inside of a Wayland system. Now GNOME 50 is going to completely remove everything. So all of these Xcode are just are still here, but they're not compiled any longer. Allowing a distribution that still wants to run X on GNOME 49 to simply turn those on for compile and still run X. But starting in GNOME version 50, there will be no X code in there at all. You'll be completely dependent on X Wayland. The problem is, is that the, what Wayland, one of the major issues that Wayland solves, which is security, also breaks it for things that you have to trust a little bit more. Although it, it's apparent it doesn't have to break it because there are still screen recorders I'm working with that work. So I basically wanted to come over here and just test it out. I want to look at some applications that people have said over the years have not worked well under uh, under Wayland and see how those work. So I looked up a couple different lists. One of those applications was Signal. However, that was the Signal with Flatpak was the reference I could find. And uh, this one here will actually work. So you can run this. This is the Snap version, of course. Um, and of course, simple screen recorder, Snap version will not work, will not run, will not do anything. So that is a fundamental problem that there are snaps available in the Ubuntu Snap Store that simply do not work because components of them are completely missing. So this is what my biggest challenge with Wayland will be is that as it's forced out to everybody, we are now going to see a major regression in some software that still doesn't work that is still in the repositories. So if somebody, for example, goes to the Ubuntu software store and searches for screen recording, this is what we have. Now, OBS in theory works. This is actually what I used to do screen recording over on my Arch system. I believe that works on Wayland without a problem. I didn't actually test that one in this instance here. There's two unofficial simple screen recorders. Neither of these work. There's Mind Recorder and uh, Mind Recorder uh, apparently doesn't work. There's Blue Recorder, which kind of pulls up, but I fails to record anything. It kind of has the same problem that Simple Screen Recorder has. It'll record audio, but it won't record any video. 
because Wayland is blocking it from accessing anything, whereas our pixel token uh, taken is what we're using now, which really, really, really wants to upload everything you record to their cloud, which is terrifying. So I'm not sure I fully trust it, but hey, we are on real hardware on a disposable operating system just for testing purposes. So, eh, okay, have that up, my friend. All done for a video that's going public anyway. So Blue Recorder has not worked for me. Uh, this one here is just terminal sessions. There's Pixel Token. And the last one was Kuha. Kuha has a problem that it will record your video and it can record the whole screen. But even though there's the option to record audio, it will not record audio. And I'm not sure what the issue with that is. So if I come over here for example, on screen recorders on Ubuntu, there is a whole lot of screen recorders in here and almost none of them work. Literally the only one that will work is Pixel Taken, which is a little creepy that it wants to upload everything you take to their cloud. And I'm pretty sure OBS Studio will work as well. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'm fairly sure it will uh, just based on using it in the past. Now, other applications people have called out before are things like VLC, which does work. It will take a little bit of time to get booted, but it does actually work. And this is, I think I installed this as a snap as well. Uh, our whole LibreOffice suite, that should, of course, work. That's been worked on with Wayland for a while. What you have to remember is that for an application to work well under Wayland, the application developer has to specifically write it to work with Wayland, whereas under X, they just had to write the application and do a default uh, screen, um, uh, basically uh, call, call the, the screen instances in order to do that. So the whole point of this, how Spotify was the other one that was on that list. I didn't even test this one yet. So Spotify, okay, so it appears as though Spotify is working here as well. Obviously, I don't have a Spotify account, so I'm not going to log in. There's nothing to scan, but at least on the surface, it loads, it boots here on Ubuntu. We are good. Now, how is, how is this going to work as far as everything is concerned? Well, obviously, Ubuntu is going to make sure, and any other distribution is going to make sure that the basic default apps or even the most popular of the applications are going to work very well when it, when it comes out because th this is the first version of Ubuntu which will not have X in it at all. Uh, this is because it is the first one based on GNOME 49. They initially wanted to have pushback against removing X, but they decided that this would be a good time for them to remove it. And the reason is very good. Uh, you see, Ubuntu has a release schedule where every, um, uh, every even year 04, so April of every even year is an LTS. And for the removal of X, now one argument said that let's go ahead and keep X in here for one more LTS. I like that argument and I think it's probably the better argument for compatibility. But what they did here is they have chosen to follow after GNOME and say, okay, we're going to remove it. So we're going to go ahead and get GNOME 49 shipped in for the point release before the LTS. This will, in theory, give them a lot of bugs, uh, time to work out the bugs so that moving into the LTS, they will have already had a full tested system without any X at all. That's most likely what they're going to do. And then they'll probably use GNOME 50 for that next one is my, my random guess, which will not have any X code at all. The advantage of that is that you should see a significantly smaller size of your distribution if they remove every bit of X code from it. That's my, my, my sum, summization. I, I don't know if, if it's completely accurate or not. I'm not a distro builder. I'm not a coder in the background. It just seems to me like right now they have two entire Windows systems crammed into the downloads. It makes sense to me that the downloads will be a lot smaller. That is an advantage moving into an LTS that is significantly smaller. All right. But on the downside, 
if they do not clean out all of these applications in their Snap Store, and since they're pushing snaps on us, if they do not go through every single application inside of the Snap Store and remove everything that does not work properly under their Wayland implementation, they are going to look like a crappy distribution and people switching to Ubuntu from Windows because they've heard about Ubuntu all these years and are finally trying it out are going to have a horrible experience and they may very well switch back to Windows because they're like, nothing ever works over there. Because they have all of these apps that still rely on X, and X Wayland will not work for all of them. And so that is my advice to the Ubuntu developers here. You need to really go through particularly your Snap Store, since you're so hard about pushing snaps. You have got to remove everything that will not work under this implementation. Otherwise, you're going to have a patchwork store that a bunch of stuff in here just doesn't work. Now, maybe the things that don't work are simply tied to this one niche thing that I use daily, which is screen recording. But even still, you do need to make sure that every application that you're pushing, every application available is going to work properly no matter, uh, you know, no matter if somebody is on Wayland here or not. So I think it's probably a positive move to do this. I think it's the right time rather than testing out no X on the LTS. But at the same time, there are still a lot of issues that still need to be resolved. And it's important that we examine this and make sure that everything available for the downloads actually works. But this also means you need to solve the fact that I can always go in into um, the terminal here and I can install a lot of these applications from the Debian repository as well. So if I do a simple screen recorder over here, it will install. And it's going to go ahead and install. And actually, unlike the Snap version, this one will actually run. So now I'll have two simple screen recorders. This one's the Snap Edition, which doesn't even work. And then we have the Debian Edition, which does work, but tells us that this is a non-Wayland. You can actually record audio with this, but all of your, all of your screen is going to turn up being black. Uh, maybe if you select a specific window, it might work. Um, I didn't test that, but I tend to want to record the entire screen. So uh, that's one of the, the downsides of this, of removing X, is there's still a lot of software available, not only in the Snap Store that they want to push, but in the Debian repositories that will not work. And this is why many of us are against this massive push entirely for Wayland, because... If we're pushing for Wayland everywhere and there's a whole ton of broken packages, Linux takes a massive step backwards. And I don't want that to happen. We just got completely working really well. And now people want to remove Wayland. And their arguments, while they have some valid arguments, are sometimes missing the point if a lot of the applications we rely on no longer work. So that's my brief thought here. Let me know your thoughts on this. And our illustrious screen recorders audio cut out right there. Wayland's ready, folks.